Innovation Day. Brought to you by Comcast. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the Comcast Silicon Valley Innovation Center here in Sunnyvale. It's a very cool space. I think it's grown up over a number of years as they originally, I think was some acquired companies and now they got a huge setup here. And we had a big day today talking about customer experience. And, and really, you know, if you look at the Comcast voice remote and there's a lot of stuff going on that's maybe under the coverage, you don't really give Comcast credit for, but they're actually doing a lot. And we're excited to kind of dive into it a little bit deeper with our next guest. She's Annie Weckeser. She's the CMO of Unifor. Annie, welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me here today. Absolutely, so what is Unifor for people that aren't familiar with the company? So Unifor is a global leader in conversational service automation, and our vision is to bridge the gap between human and machine through voice, AI, and automation. It's a mouthful. Yes. Conversational. Service. Service. Yes. So people talking, so you guys are heavily involved in voice. So what are the applications where people are using your voice? Yep, um, well primarily our focus is call centers, okay. so large enterprises um, who have massive call centers, um, where we want to go in and help them with AI and automation to help better listen to their customers, help better listen to the customer's voice, and, uh, and solve the problems uh, in a faster ma manner. So I don't have to repeat my account number six different times to six exactly. different agents right. as I move or through. Or caught in an IVR <laughs> cycle, <laughs> or, or, or perhaps the chat that you were talking to doesn't, the person on the phone who picks it up, you have to repeat your story. Right. Um, this is something where the AI and automation will actually assist the agent to become a superhero. So it's pretty interesting, because you know there's a lot of conversation about AI and ML, but yeah. really you know where it's going to have its, its impact is applied AI. Yes. And you said the company started out really more just on a pure voice, but now you're applying more and more kind of AI in the back end. So what, yeah. you know, what kind of opportunities do you have now beyond just simply being able to do voice uh, you know, conversion? Yep, well to the first part of your question, the company started at IAT Madras um, back in 2008. Um, and originally the focus of the company um, was really centered on voice. Voice being the lowest common denominator. Um, in, an India, in India, where the um, languages are 260, you know, potential languages to understand, and maybe 25 at the top, um, we set out really to, to focus on voice and, and then realized that customer service was a large uh, market and somewhere we could, we, ha we could have a big impact. Right, right. So um, you recognize you said 100 different languages? 100 different languages through our platform, uh, which, is, which is pretty incredible when you think about it. Um, all of the different people calling in uh, to customer service potentially, or, or maybe through a, a chat bot or a voice bot to get their issues solved. Right. And then you integrate in with whatever the, the core system is that the customer service agents are using. Yes, So exactly. what are the types of tips and tricks that the call center agent gets by using your guys' service? Yeah, so think about it as a platform um, where the customer um, can, uh, can help their agents be more effective agents. Um, so one of the things that call centers struggle with is, is something called after call work where um, they may, agents may spend two to three minutes after a call summarizing the call. One of the things that our technology does, and, and this is uh, primarily um, for one of our, our customers who's, who's a healthcare client, they said, you know, wouldn't it be great if we could automate that completely? So we've taken the after call work uh, for one uh, customer or client, taken that two to three minutes down to 10 seconds, where that work that the agent would have done is uh, is completely summarized, and the agent validates it, can correct it if, if needed, and it's completely done. So that not only saves uh, the agent time to either pick up more calls and help um, help other customers, or it can get them off the phone in a quicker manner to save the call center uh, more money. So that's doing more than just simply providing a transcript of the call, You're which exactly is something, right. a different track than right. actually is listening in to, to provide suggestions. It's actually taking it to the next level in terms of what categorizi categorizing, what type yes. of call, yeah. the outcomes, et cetera. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's actually quite interesting because um, oftentimes um, less than 1% of calls are listened to, um, b somewhere between one and 10% of calls are listened to in call centers. So we can listen to 100% of those calls. Um, in addition, we offer something called that's more along the lines of a, like a live agent coach to where the agent can co concentrate on the conversation with the customer, which is the primary thing, listening to the customer. And our technology will serve you up 
um, coaching mechanisms in terms of uh, getting to faster resolution uh, for the customer and, and getting them better insights to be almost a superhero of an agent. Right. And I would imagine the, the accuracy in terms of, of recording what happened in the call to yes. go back in and do the analytics and and, and, ha and you know, have a text-based search, so you can do all types of uh, analysis on those yeah. calls, which was data that was probably just lost before, right, yeah. into, the, yeah. into the ether. You're exactly right. I mean, I, I think the accuracy is uh, is clearly a lot lower than if you were to to have the AI and automation and machine learning technology right. there. Yeah. So the other conversation in the, in the, uh, the sit-down that we had earlier today yeah. was really about driving a customer-centric culture in your own yeah. company, not only just enabling it, but really building it inside. I wonder if you could share some of the things that you guys have done to help make sure that everybody stays focused on the objective, which is the customer. Yeah, I, I think it really starts at the top, right? It starts with the leader of the organization. So we have a, a CEO who's extremely focused on, on customer centricity. And in fact, it's it's our number one core value uh, within the organization. So you see um, everyone from the CEO uh, down, to, down to the rest of the organization completely focused on the customer and, and their needs. What about when the customer doesn't know what they need? What about when you're, you know, you're bringing a new technology and you, you're inviting a slightly different process or a slightly different yeah. change and you're saying, hey, this is actually a yeah. better way to keep text and transactions and we actually have a really cool coach that can help yeah. you know, kind of guide the people. How do you help you know, move customers yeah. to a place that they don't necessarily know they want to go. Yeah, I mean, you, you find that a lot, right? It's not necessarily the technology that we're providing for today, but it's um, having the innovation and having the um, the foresight to create a platform that, that will be future-proof. So that's critical. Um, I, you know, I think that there are a lot of customers who might not know that they what they need today, but that's our job to help them innovate and push the envelope on uh, all things AI and automation. Right. I'm just curious, too, in terms of the impact of your technology on kind of the tracking software for those call center agents, right? So this is a group of people that have to process a lot of calls. You know, everything is tracked to the minute. And, you know, it's funny they had a demo with, with Westworld. And, yeah. you know, when, when well, Westworld's funny because we started treating machines like, uh, or treating machines like machines, and they wanted to treat, be treated like people and sometimes I wonder on some of these technologies you know is it is it enabling them to have more time to be more thoughtful is it enabling them to have more time to get to better outcomes or is it sometimes perceived as oh my gosh you're just trying to jam you know four more calls in my hour by taking care of my two minutes that I used to spend wrapping up the uh, the call do, do you yeah. think about those things in, in you know, the end customer the time is really the premium right so the number one focus is is giving people time back and whether that's the uh, that's the, the uh, customer who's calling in and and you want to solve an issue and get them faster resolution or whether that's the agent that wants to free up more time in having the conversation with the customer solving their problem and then and then getting off the phone I think right. that's the most uh, effective way of doing it just final question in terms of in terms of voice and the evolution of voice because I don't think people are really completely tuned in certainly not people old like like we are um, what are some of the conversations when people finally get, you know, kind of the enabler that voice communications opens up that that's not necessarily available with text or not necessarily available yeah. with other types of channels. Yeah, I mean, I, I see it most easily in my children. Uh, they expect everything to be voice enabled. Um, and so everything from the Comcast remote that they pick up uh, in our living room, they everywhere we go where they see a remote, they expect everything to be voice enabled. <laughs> so, um, I mean, that's that's really the future. And I think a lot of customer service will be listening to your customer's voice, however they want to communicate with you, whatever channel they want to communicate on. Right. Really cool story, Annie. And uh, and thanks for taking a few minutes and telling and sharing it with us. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. All right. She's Annie. I'm Jeff. You're watching the Cube. We're at the Comcast. CX Experience Innovation Day here at the Silicon Valley Innovation Center. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Oh.